Okay, so before to uh, start our today's lecture, I want to recap uh, what we have seen in last lecture. So actually, this is the example that I told you in the last lecture. That is important example that you should remember actually how your instruction uh, execution done. So in this example, we have seen uh, briefly again. I uh, we'll recapitulate this example and then we'll start today's uh, today's topic discussion. Okay, so here we have seen this uh, the memory and this is the address and on the CPU registers there is a PC uh, program counter accumulator and instruction register. So these different registers are available. At the initially the PC holding uh, the address of instruction that uh, instruction want to execute. So PC is holding an instruction address that is a 300. So in 300 there is a instruction that is 1940. So this 1940 instruction loaded into the IR that is instruction register. And I told you the instruction that nothing but one uh, unique signal generated. So for one is one unique signal. Again, in the binary, it is 0, 0, 0, 1. So this is the unique signal generated. And what is the meaning of this unique signal? The meaning is transfer the data into accumulator. So transfer the data into the accumulator. So at the memory address of 300, the instruction loaded into the instruction register. So whatever the instruction is there, it will be executed. So what is the meaning of this one? One means transfer the data in accumulator. So at a nine pole location, you will find there is a data. The data is this. Uh, triple zero three. So this data will be loaded into the accumulator. So in step two, you could see here the data loaded into the accumulator. As soon as the instruction executed, your PC incremented by one. Now three zero 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 become three zero one. Now at again, we'll see at location three zero one, there is a next instruction that is a five nine four one. So what is the meaning? Again, this five nine four one instruction loaded into the IR instruction register. So in step number three, you could see here, 5941 instruction loaded into the IR instruction register. So again, we'll see the, so uh, in the execution, the five meaning is uh, the instruction decoded and the meaning of five is addition. So at the location 941, whatever data is there, that data will be added with the accumulator. So here, the addition done and data added with the accumulator and accumulator value updated. Here you could see the accumulator value is five instead of three. So after that, again, the PC value incremented. So earlier it was 301, now it is a 302. So at 302, the another instruction is there to, uh, that is 2941. So in 2941, uh, this instruction loaded into the IR. Again, we'll see the, what is the meaning of two. Two means accumulator result back stored into the memory. So at 941 location, whatever the value in the accumulator, it will be stored into the memory at the location of 941. So this is the main 
uh, important thing actually how your uh, program execute in, into the processor. So again, we have seen in detail all these steps in the last lecture, as well as we have seen the instruction cycle of state diagram, how, how actually your instruction execute. So actually, uh, today we'll start uh, next topic that is interrupt. So before to start this topic, I want to ask you, what is mean by interrupt? Post your answer in the chat box. What is the meaning of interrupt? Yes, once students say disturbance, to stop someone in between, right? Okay, so by these two way, the, these two meaning you might have an understand what is the meaning of interrupt. Many time even we use this interrupt uh, while speaking. Uh, like if you are speaking with someone and someone is uh, uh, stopping you uh, in between, uh, while you are discussing with another one, that time you say, hey, don't interrupt. Right, in this way. So actually similar kind of interrupt you will find in the pro, in the computer, while the processor is executing the interrupt generated. So there is a various types of in interrupt. So broadly we can categorize these interrupt into four category like program interrupt, timer, input output, and hardware failure. So actually, here uh, from the program side, the interrupt generated. For example, if you are dividing uh, any value by the zero, the interrupt generate, the error occur, the interrupt generated. So in the program, it generated by some condition that occur as a result of an instruction execution such as arithmetic overflow, division by zero, attempt to execute an illegal machine instruction, or reference outside a user's allowed memory space. So these are the few cases that uh, uh, in a program, the interrupt can be generated. The second one is a timer, generated by a timer within a processor. So this allows the operating system to perform certain function on a regular basis. So because of the timer, the interrupt generated, and as soon as the interrupt generated, the computer will perform the particular function, a certain kind of function, whatever it predefined. In input output, it is generated by an input output controller to a signal normal completion of an operation or to uh, signal a variety of error conditions. And the next category is hardware failure. Are generated by failures such as power failure or memory parity error. So similarly, when there are number of hardware failure interrupt types are there. So these different types of, uh, uh, we can categorize all these interrupt into the four categories like program, timer, input, output, and hardware failure. So actually, what is the necessity to necessity of interrupt? Or what are the benefits we will get by the interrupt? So here by this example, actually, you could understand exactly what is the importance of interrupt in the computer program. So actually, it is a mechanism by which, so this interrupt is one kind of mechanism by which other module, example input output, may interrupt normal sequence of processing. So actually why actually suppose uh, there is the input output is there, the program is there, timer is there. So actually why they interrupt the, uh, the processor execution? And why actually this mechanism have built? The reason is 
to improve the processing efficiency of city now you might have thinking how actually the processing efficiency of cpu will be increased because of the interrupt actually interrupt is creating disturbance now it it actually stopping your process but how it help to improve the processing efficiency so this answer you will come to know by our example so today i have taken one example to explain or to understand this interrupt so example is very simple for example you are uh, your processor now don't imagine uh, now today's processor who perform uh, the multiple tasks at the same time actually whatever we are discussing i'm considering a one human machine at the very basic computer when it was developed that time actually how the interrupt even today also actually you will find interrupt in, in all the category in timer in program uh, in input output but actually that time yeah really you feel uh, the difference in the processing efficiency okay so actually the main reason why how the interrupt improve the processing efficiency because these input output devices suppose uh, we are considering the input output devices all these external devices it can be your keyboard uh, mouse printer so comparatively the processor these all external devices are lower and if you compare the cpu cpu execution is so fast compared to all these input output devices it could be your input device it can be your uh, keyboard or the printer so if you will compare both the execution speed you will find there is a big difference the cpu is very fast and your for example printer the output device which is very slow so suppose if there is no interrupt imagine your one computer is executing one single task okay and there is no interrupt and your computer is executing a program and meanwhile you have given a command for the printout and you want to print 1000 pages and you have you have given a command for the printout okay now computer executing your uh, send a command to the printer right and here the printout started and your computer is waiting until and unless all the printout how completed if you imagine for 1000 pages how much it the time your printer will take so in this scenario cpu waste a lot of time waiting for these external devices to match up with the cpu speed right because your cpu is waiting to get a acknowledgement from the printer side right my printout have completed as soon as the printout have completed the next instruction will be executed because the printer have generated interrupt uh, because there is no interrupt uh, kind of command over there so in this scenario scenario the computer have to send uh, the request to the printer and then the computer cpu has to wait until and unless the printer acknowledge my task is completed now you can execute your another instruction so without interrupt there is a wastage of cpu time as well as instruction cycle continuous uh, checking to and uh find the task completion 
So continuously, your computer has to check the task completed or not. So here actually, uh, we can understand, we can change this scenario. How? Simple by the interrupt. For example, your computer is executing an instruction one by one. And again, the same scenario, if you want to print 1000 pages and a printer issue a command or you have uh, interrupt it generated for the printout, then what your computer will do, he send uh, the request to the printer and he start the execution he start to execute the next instruction. Now in this scenario, the, your CPU is not waiting for the printer to finish his job. He simply send his request to the printer as well as send the data to the printer and immediately he started to execute his next instruction. Your CPU is not waiting. Okay. Now at the printer side, the printer have finished his job. Now printer issued an interrupt signal to the CPU to acknowledge, yes, my task have been completed. So this is the role of interrupt signal. Now in this scenario, you will come to know here the CPU uh, the wastage time is less comparative, comparatively without interrupt. Because CPU is not waiting for the printer and to get his job done. So here, the, similarly, uh, we have seen uh, the similar instruction cycle diagram in the last lecture. Here, the instruction cycle with interrupt, in which here you have started the instruction execution. So you, your computer patching an instruction and executing an instruction. Now here in this uh, instruction cycle diagram, you can understand until and unless Whatever the instruction is executing, that instruction is not finished, your computer will not check for the interrupt. As soon as whatever the instruction is executing, that instruction executed, then your CPU check for the interrupt. So here the first instruction is fetch, and that instruction executed. Now your computer is checking for any interrupt. So earlier you, here you could see the execution instruction interrupt disable. Because whatever the instruction is there, that instruction is executing. That's why the interrupt is disabled. So after the instruction, execution have done your it will check for the in, interrupt so here so after the execution have done it check for the interrupt and then that whatever the the interrupt is uh, came from the program it for the timeout for the input output devices that particular instruction will be executed. And at the same time, it, it will start to fetch a next instruction and execute the instruction. So whenever here, the interrupt process have completed, it can be your input output device, it will generate again interrupt signal to the uh, your CPU. And then that particular uh, 
the interrupt cycle will be considered. So here, uh, from this scenario, you can easily understand the main thing. After completing the whatever the instruction which are executing, then your CPU will check for the interrupt signal. Okay, so both the scenario here you can properly understand without interrupt and with interrupt that we have discussed earlier. Without interrupt, CPU interrupt a printer to print. While printer does its task, CPU wait for task completion. CPU here, you note this thing. CPU is waiting for the printer until the printer complete its task. So after the task completion, now here the user program stopped. So earlier user program is executing, but meanwhile CPU interrupt a signal to printer to print. So then after the interrupt, CPU send a print command to the printer and printer started its task. And then CPU waiting for the task completion. Now here you observe user program stop is not executing. And your CPU repeatedly checking to the printer, the task completed or not. So when the CPU came to know the printer have completed its task, then the CPU proceed for the next instruction, the user program instruction. So this is the without interrupt. And the same task, how we can do with the interrupt. Now here CPU interrupt a printer to print. The same, like you without interrupt and with interrupt. CPU interrupt, printer to print. The while printer does its task, CPU engage in executing other instruction. So see with the interrupt, how actually the time reduce? Because while printer is doing its task, CPU engage in executing other instruction, the user program instruction. So user program proceed, proceed concurrently with printing. So at the same time, user program as well as pro user program is executing at one side, at the same time printer is printing your pages. So CPU is not continuously uh, checking a printer for his task completed or not because CPU executing its another instruction and as soon as the printer completed its task, printer generate interrupt command to the CPU. So when task done, printer tell to CPU. So how printer tells to CPU? It, by the interrupt. So now you can understand how actually interrupt a stopping in between the program execution because CPU is executing user program. Meanwhile, CPU have completed its task. So it generating interrupt signal and informing to the CPU, I have done my task. And now the CPU display this respect to command to the user, your task completed, all pages uh, print out have done, blah, blah, blah. Not like this way the computer will send a message. So, so as we have seen, so these kind of uh, four categories we have seen, it can be your program or it, uh, maybe the, the interrupt signal generated by the timer, input, output, or hardware failure. Already we have discussed at the beginning the interrupt. By this diagram, actually, you can understand how the interrupt generated and at the same time, the how the control transfer to the printer and after that 
the user program next instruction execution started here the user program is executing is the send request to the printer for the print to print the pages and from the next i plus 1 again the next uh, instruction execution start so here the same instruction cycle state diagram with interrupt so similarly similar diagram we have seen in last lecture instruction cycle state diagram here uh, the interrupt is added so already we have discussed instruction address calculation so at the pc uh, post the address calculated and the pc hold the instruction address so based on the address we have to page an instruction for example pc is holding the address of 300 so we have to page an instruction from the address of 300 that similar example we have seen so that instruction page so so after the fetching instruction we have to decode the instruction like we have decoded we have uh, like the one is there so meaning of one is load a data into the accumulator that is the decoding so we have de decoded a meaning of one the instruction one that we have to load the data into the accumulator. Then, so instruction decoded, for example, your instruction is uh, A plus B, for example. So, A and B, two operands are there, right? So, we have to load a data, A and B data, for the processing. So what we have to do, we have to calculate their address because this A and B value stored into the memory. So where actually the, uh, or at what address this value of A and B are stored, we have to identify that location. So that's why operand address calculation have done. So here we get the address of A and B. So we will fetch both the operands. So operand fetching for multiple operands A and B. Now the both the operand fetch, then data operation. So here the addition operation will be performed. And after the addition operation, what you will get, you will get the result. So again, you have to store that result into the into the memory and for example your instruction is c is equals to a plus b so you get the value of c now this is again one operand and you have to store this operand into the memory again you have to calculate the address of the memory so here the operand address calculation have done and that particular operand c operand stored into the memory now here this is the main thing at this location i hope my cursor is visible to all of you at this location after the execution the first instruction completed then we are checking for the interrupt then we are checking for the interrupt here interrupt check and if there is no interrupt, then we are moving for the next instruction. And if there is an interrupt, then interrupt instruction executed. So here, if there is no interrupt, we are moving for the next instruction, the user program. And if there is an interrupt, then control goes to the interrupt. And this interrupt signal, the in interrupt, whatever the instruction is there, that instruction will be executed. So uh, there is uh, different types of interrupt can be there. Like this is one sequential interrupt. In sequential interrupt, uh, here these are the user program. These are the different instructions are there. And one by one instructions are executing. Meanwhile, 
the one interrupt is generated from the IO devices and another interrupt is generated from the timer or from the program. So this time you can say this is a sequential interrupt process. Multiple interrupts are there. Might be you are taking an input from the keyboard. Obviously there is a number of uh, instructions are there and one by one the instructions are executing. Then if you are taking input, pro, if your program is taking input from the keyboard, then again the interrupt signal is generated for the input. Because again, you will enter uh, your input through the keyboard, which is lower compared to your CPU. The sequential interrupt, there is a sequence of interrupts are there, and in nested interrupt, in nested interrupt, you will find uh, here in the user program, there is a one interrupt is generated. So after the interrupt, the interrupted instruction instructions are executing and within the within these instruction there is again one more interrupt again one more interrupt so that time you can say this is a nested interrupt for example the interrupt you generated to take the input from the user okay and while you are giving an input, the error is occur. So again, the another interrupt is generated from the interrupt handler X and a new interrupt generated that is handler Y. So that time we can say it is a nested interrupt. Similarly, uh, the multiple interrupt. In multiple interrupt, you here you will uh, you could see here how the multiple interrupts are generated user program is executing uh, meanwhile the interrupt signal is generated from the printer to printer and again in the printer there is a two interrupt signals are generated for the communication interrupt service routine and disk interrupt service routine so here you could see there is a multiple interrupt okay so all about interrupt I hope uh, all you understood what is the interrupt. Kindly post your answer to the chat box. Did you understand or not interrupt? Dear yes, students, did you understand interrupt? Okay, answer. Few questions uh, I have shared with you. Answer these questions. Dear students, answer these questions. Questions are visible to you on your screen.
only five students acknowledge are you there everyone immediately respond otherwise i am going to end this poll Only seventeen students have given responded out of thirty three. Nineteen. Everyone should be active in the lecture. You have only two hours lecture in a day, right? Actively, you should present for the lecture. Okay, twenty-seven responses out of thirty-three students. Dear students, uh, remember uh, at what time you are joining for the session, when you are leaving for the session, you are acknowledging or not. Everything uh, actually, uh, we will get this kind of a report when you join for the session, when you left for the session, who have participated for the poll, who have not. so all this kind of data is available with us so take it positively attend uh, i think only you have only 2 to 3 hours lectures per day so take it seriously attend all the lecture okay so the result is in print of you and the orange color is the right answer maximum students have given the right answer 21 students have given the right answer the interrupt request line is a part of the control line a control command signal generated for the read for the write for the interrupt obviously it is the part of control you have to control na for example one program is executing and meanwhile you want to uh give input to the program so the interrupt signal is generated for the input output device right so who will do this job the control line right a data line carry your data address line carry the address but the control line it is a part of control to issue a interrupt request for the input the output device and the second one is the return address from the interrupt service routine is stored on the processor stack so actually uh, uh, we discuss with the simple way how actually uh, your pro user program execution stop if as soon as the interrupt generated and the uh, the cpu send a request to the respective input output device or he execute the interrupted instruction and then he again start to execute the user program so actually to do this actually it is uh, the processor have to do the many kind of tasks because whatever the user program instructions are executed you have to store their result into the memory or the register and again from that point 
you have to start the next execution, right? So you have to remember each and everything. So there's a the number of tasks are there, but here the answer is process stack. The third one, the signal sent to the device from the processor to the device after receiving an interrupt is that is called interrupt acknowledge. Acknowledgement is there, na? As soon as the printer have completed his task, the printer send acknowledgement to your computer. So generally, uh, this kind of reply in computer, you will find a word that is acknowledgement. Even in computer network, your data received or not, so the another router or another host will send acknowledgement to you. So generally, you will find this acknowledgement Acknowledgement is an appropriate word in computer uh, science. So, interrupt acknowledgement is the right answer. So, 21 students have given the right answer, that is a control line. And 15 students have given the right answer, that is processor stack. And 21 students have given the right answer that is interrupt acknowledge. Okay, so uh, briefly again, I discuss what we have discussed in uh, today's lecture. We have discussed interrupt. Uh, this interrupt we can categorize into four classes program, timer, input, output and hardware failure and we have seen in program when the interrupt signal generated example like uh, arithmetic overflow division by zero is an example of program in timer it generates a timer within the processor for a particular time if you want to if you uh, want to remind so again this is a one kind of interrupt as soon as the time uh, you reaches to that particular time your cpu have to remind so this is one kind of interrupt. Again, you have, the CPU have to send a particular message to the output device, that is a monitor. So that is a timer interrupt. Input output, if you are typing through the keyboard. Again, so to take an input while your program is executing, again, need to generate an interrupt. A printer, another example we have seen. Hardware failure. Again, interrupt is required if suddenly hardware fail you will find a respect to message on your monitor, right? So these are the four, broadly we can categorize this interrupt into four category. It could be the program timer, input, output, or hardware failure. These things we have seen. We have seen uh, when the actually interrupt signal generated after the instruction execution have done. Within the, if your instruction is executing, in between your CPU does not check for the interrupt. As the instruction execution are done, that time your CPU check for the interrupt. We have seen uh, the difference between without interrupt and with interrupt, right? Uh, how they actually the interrupt handle. We have seen the instruction cycle state diagram. Again, the same way, after the comp ex execution of the instruction, then we are checking for the interrupt. And if there is no interrupt, then we are moving to to execute the next instruction. And this, uh, the interrupt can be uh, different types, can have a different type, like sequential interrupt, nested interrupt, and multiple interrupt. So tomorrow, we'll discuss the interconnection structure. Thank you. Uh, if you have any question, you can post your question uh, in chat box. I am here to answer your question about interrupt. Okay, no question. Okay, thank you. You can leave for the session.